please welcome Matt Booth. By a show of hands, how many people in here have customers or clients or members who could use an attitude adjustment? By a show of hands, how many people in here work with someone who could use an attitude? No pointing. Okay. By a show of hands, how many people in here live with someone who could use an attitude? Anyone married to someone who could use? And, <laughs> both hands. And by a show of hands, how many people in here are willing to admit that at least from time to time, you're the one who could use an attitude adjustment? See, it should be all of us, shouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, no one can be positive 100% of the time. This is what I do for a living. I'm not positive all the time. If you don't believe me, ask my wife. She'll tell you. I mean, bad things happen to people, don't they? Bad things happen all the time. It's like we have an iceberg of negativity coming right into our living rooms. There's been beheadings around the world for 2,000 years. Now all of a sudden, where are the beheadings? They're on your phones, in your living rooms. Your kids got them. It's like some people, every day they wake up and they put an IV drip of negativity right in their arm and they just suck it in all day. See, I believe it's okay to have one of those days because all of us have one of those days. Nobody's immune to one of those days. You just have to be very careful and you have to think about your attitude and you have to check your attitude because if you don't, one of those days can very quickly turn into two of those days. And then three and four and five and six and seven and everybody in here knows someone. It could be somebody sitting in here right now who's had like five years in a row worth of one of those days. And that's not okay. About 10 years ago, I was having one of those days. And I walked into my office and I saw my assistant, Susan. And Susan said to me, she looked at me, she knew I was having just one of those days. You can tell by people's body language and by the tone of their voice, can't you? She looked at me and she said, are you having one of those days? I said, what are you talking about? What do you mean one of those days? She goes, I think you need to go do something. And she knew that some form of exercise, going for a walk, taking a hike, right, going for a bike ride, helped me get over one of those days. She knew that, so she was telling me to do that. Plus, she didn't want to work with me if I was having one of those days, and she told me. So I didn't know what to do, so I went to our local YMCA to get a workout. And having one of those days, I'm kind of in a feisty mood, and I walk into the YMCA, and sitting behind the desk is a gal named Teresa. She's about this tall, 55 years old, fiery red hair. And she kind of got that look on her face. And I said to Teresa, the same way we say to everybody all the time, I said, hi, how are you? <gasps> You'll never believe what just happened. Well, we all love drama, don't we? So I lean in a little closer. Teresa, what happened? She said, <sighs> four boys just ran past here with a basketball. <gasps> at the YMCA. And she's like, yeah, and you know what they did with that basketball? They took the basketball to the racquetball court. <gasps> <laughs> Teresa, did you call anyone? I'm about to. I said, I got this. So here I run down the hall and I see those four kids at the YMCA with a basketball, right? In the racquetball court. I know, I was mad, I know. Right? Now, do you know what else those little kids did? As I peered into the racquetball court, three of them still had their outdoor shoes on and were getting scuffs all over the racquetball court. So here I am a couple minutes later, I'm chasing these four kids up and down the hall, yelling at them at the YMCA in Dubuque, Iowa, for having a basketball. And that didn't look very good. I ran into a few prospects, a couple clients of mine that visit the YMCA, and it did not look very good for my business. The next day, I jumped in my car to head to a speaking event, and I popped in a CD. Some of you might have heard of this guy before. His name's Zig Ziglar. Maybe you have, I don't know. And, and on that particular CD, Zig Ziglar talked about what had just happened the day before. He said, quit asking people uh, about you know, how are you? Because we live in a negative world. And when you ask somebody how they are, 
Most of the time you get negative stuff, right? And he said, instead, ask him what's good in the day or, or something fun about them. Just ask him. I said, I'm going to try this on Teresa. So I walked in to see Teresa and she's sitting at the front desk. And I said, Teresa, tell me something good. <gasps> she froze. Teresa didn't have an answer for me. I don't think anyone in her whole life had ever asked her to tell her something good. She just froze. And I said, Teresa, never mind, I've got something good for you. And it cheered her up, and it cheered me up, and it cheered up the dude behind me in line because he was waiting, right? And it kind of has a boomerang effect, and it was cool. So the next time I walked in, I'm going to try it again. And I walked in and I saw Teresa. I said, Teresa, tell me something good. She goes, mm, it's sunny outside. <laughs> And I'm like, it is, it's sunny outside. That's such a great answer. I've been doing this for 10 years now. And nine out of the 10 times when you ask somebody that, a few of you today told me this, they will talk about the weather. It is crazy. So it had a boomerang effect, right? It helps Teresa, it helps me, it helps the people in line. I think Teresa started seeing my car pull in the parking lot, right? So one day I was kind of in a hurry and I, I go in and there's three coworkers standing behind Teresa. And I run in, and I'm in a hurry, and I go to the door, and she's won't, not buzzing me in. She's like, <clears throat> Teresa, tell me something good. She goes, my cat just had kittens. <laughs> and all her coworkers are laughing by now. There's four people behind me. I'm like, that's so good. I love kittens, Teresa. They're tasty. <laughs> that's not true. I don't eat kittens anymore. because. They taste horrible. You really got a slow cook. I guess I'm not in Iowa anymore. Am I? But do you see what a small change in your attitude and the way you communicate your attitude, it can have a big effect on your customers, your members, your clients, people you work with, people that you live with. What I want you to do right now is very quickly, I'm going to give you a minute. Just turn to someone close to you and I want you to ask them to tell you something good, and you cannot talk about the weather, okay? So real quickly, I'll give you a minute. See, this is a small change. This can be a small change in your attitude. See, and nobody wants to quit, right? This can be a small change in your attitude that can make a huge difference. I didn't make this up. Zig Ziglar didn't make this up, but it's something that you can use and you can take. That's a very small change and can make a big difference. End of May, 2009, my secretary, Susan, passed away from cancer. And when that happens, you tend to have one of those days, right? I didn't know what to do, so I was kind of walking around a little bit, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go to the YMCA, see if I can get a workout in. Get over this, help me out. And I walk in, a motivational speaker, right? Guess who's sitting at the front desk at the YMCA in Dubuque, Iowa? Teresa. Guess what Teresa said to me? She said, tell me something good. I froze. I couldn't think of one thing good. I couldn't even say it's sunny outside. And she goes, Matt, she goes, never mind. She goes, my daughter, who's been fighting overseas, I just found out last night she's coming home for good. <laughs> See, and it's that small change in your attitude and how you communicate it can make a huge difference. My name is Matt Booth. If you think I might be a good fit for one of your events or one of your clients or members, please come talk to me at the table. Thank you very much.